Hi, I'm Claire. I'm the base manager here at Sunsail Ionian in Greece. We have a fantastic sailing area here. There's so much to do, nowhere's too far. You could spend a week, you could spend a month and you'd never actually probably get to all the places that we have out here. We've got five main islands, which most of you will know as Paxos, Levkus, Kefalonia, Ithaca and Zakynthos. And in amongst there we have another probably a hundred islands that you can visit. If I start with the island of Levkus, which is the closest to the base. Levkus has a very famous harbour on the southern end, which is Vasiliki. Vasiliki is the third most famous spot in Europe for windsurfing. It has its own casabatic in the afternoon called Eric. He normally turns on about two o'clock and you can literally see the clouds coming down the mountainside and the wind just turns on like a light switch. So if you're coming into there, you can normally got a nice 4-6 just blowing straight out the harbour. Coming out of Vasiliki, you've also on Lefkus got the harbour of Civita. Civita's a very large natural harbour here and it's one of the few places that most people go if there's some bad weather coming. Mainly people tend to go stern to and drop their anchor here. Looks complicated, sounds a bit dramatic, but it's actually quite easy. Or alternatively, you can just free swing in the harbours. Also on Lefkus, you've got Nidri Town. Um, Nidri Town's actually quite a sort of bucket and spade. There's a lot of um, hotel holidays there. They've got an, sort of probably the closest thing we have to a sandy beach in this area. And you can do things like jet skiing, paragliding, all those kind of things. Um, and then just to the south of it again is another sort of large bolt hole, Vliho, which again is very idyllic, very Greek, fantastic rolling hillsides, lots of pine trees. Um, and everybody just free swings in that harbour. It's very, very good holding. If you fancy pampering yourself for the evening, you can go into Lefkus Town Marina and they'll help you with a lazy line and then you've got showers and electricity ashore. Just across from Lefkus Island, you've got the island of Meganissi. Meganissi is very quaint, very rural, very traditional Greece. You've got three main harbours on the northern end, which is the safer end, especially in any big southerlies which we occasionally get. You've got Sparta Hori, which is beautiful, deep blue water. Sparta Hori actually means town on the hill, and it is literally, you go in, you've got all the moorings in front of you on lazy lines because it's so deep, and then the town is literally above it, and it's cobbled streets, little old ladies in black. Um, it's probably one of the few original that are still lived in like that villages around here. It's also you've got some very friendly guys there at the bottom, both of the sort of moorings. Because they're lazy lines, they're actually put in by the taverna owners there and they'll help you on and take your lines and, and get you sorted. Next door you've got Little Vathi, which again, probably just a very quaint little fishing village. Very popular to go and have a look in. There's a sunken aeroplane, which according to rumour was a pilot crashed about 40, 50 years ago over by Ithaca and the fishermen that found him towed him in and towed him round to his home harbour, which was there and it stayed there ever since. And on the northeastern corner of the island, you have Port Athene. Port Athene, there's literally one taverna run by two brothers, Jimmy and Spiro. They will come down, take your lines. You'll still drop your anchor and go stern to on their rickety old traditional little quay. They do Greek dancing. Um, it's The whole island is like being part of somebody's family. They really do embrace you and take you in. <laughs> Beautiful for swimming in, all fantastic waters. None of the harbours out here are particularly large in that sort of sense, so you definitely get a, a very good feeling for Greek life and the, the Greeks are so friendly around here, I don't think you'll ever meet sort of nicer people in the world really. Just slightly to the north of Meganissi is the island of Scorpius. 
Scorpius was famous for being owned by Aristotle Onassis, who later married Jackie Kennedy. Um, he even built a little beach hut just for her on the southern tip, which you can still go and see today. It's, it is all fenced off and it's still a private island, um, but you can go on, anchor off, have a swim and go as far as the beach. I wouldn't go any further because the gardener will come down with his big machete. Coming across the east of the Ionian, you've got Calamos and Castos. Calamos and Castos, very similar but very different. They both only got one main town, which is on the east of both of the islands. Um, Calamos is kind of the big brother to Castos Island. It looks quite dark and foreboding as you approach it from the north, but once you actually get up to it, it's just, again, beautiful pine trees, lots of poplars, and it's just very, very Greek. It's a bit like stepping back in, I think, stepping back into Greece 40 years ago. You've got one donkey that brays at about six o'clock in the morning. And as you go into Kalamos Harbour, you've got one taverna predominantly in their Georges, and George will come out, call you captain, take your lines, help you moor up. And again, as with most places out here, stand to with your anchor. He doesn't do it for anything other than he's lived in that harbour all his life. He knows exactly what it's like and he just wants to help you. But as I say, ostensibly, there is only one taverna, so you will, chances are, eat there because he's so friendly. Just down from Calamos town, you've got Port Leone. And Port Leone is an abandoned village. In the 19, well, 1953, when we had the big earthquake out here, which we are unfortunately famous for, um, the main water supply was cut off in the village and literally they all just got up and left. So the actual village itself is falling apart these days, but what they have got is the church. And one thing that they do keep up, and they do keep up sort of all of the churches out here, and this is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And the only time they unlock it is when they have a service. So if you're lucky enough to be there maybe on a Sunday, sort of early in the morning, about eight, nine o'clock, then you might actually get a chance to have a peek inside. Very ornate, very beautiful. But Port Leone again, like stepping back in time. So great big huge sweeping hillsides, free drop your anchor and free swing for the evening. Uh, just be aware in the afternoons it can get a bit gusty because we do get a catabatic effect out here. So going across from Calamos you've got the island of Castos. They lie alongside each other. Castos again like stepping back that whole side of here is like stepping back 40 years. It's only in the last two years that they've recently got a shop. Uh, it's just a little tiny, it's much shallower than um, Calamos. Um, good holding, and as you go in, you just go stern to on the dock. You've got, so you can walk from one side of the island in about an hour. So it's a really pretty place. You've got a nice big windmill down on the southern tip of the island, and you can sit there. They've turned it into a restaurant, which is very nice. And you can just see down the entire Dragonaras, which is further south from here. So coming down from Castos, you've got the island of Atoko, which is just in between Castos and Ithaca. And as you come down to Atoko, Atoko is, has just two bays on it, but they are two of the most dramatic bays we have around here. You've got Cliff Bay on the south, and you've got One House Bay on the east. One House Bay, very original, but it's called One House Bay because there literally is only one house in it. And you go in, you drop your anchor, free swing for the night and it's it's beautiful. It's quite busy at lunchtime and an anchorage, so if you're looking at it for an overnight spot, I'd suggest doing it in settled weather and going in probably about five o'clock as everyone else is moving on from lunch. And then you have Cliff Bay again on the south and Cliff Bay again, just very, very dramatic cliffs. Um, it's original, isn't it? <laughs> so no, very dramatic cliffs on Cliff Bay on the south of the island. And again, just go in free swing or drop your anchor and free swing, or alternatively you can take a line ashore if you want to be a little bit more secure for the night and go stern to to a rock. The island of Ithaca is probably more famously known as to do with Homer and the Odyssey, and especially the northern harbour of, of Fricus. Fricus is actually, in Greek, means freak, but it's alleged to be the place where Homer, when he returned home from sea, stepped ashore, walked inland with his oar, and then plonked it in and said, this will be my home. Um, as to how true that is, I think mythology out here, there's a lot of different places which could potentially be the real Ithaca. But Fricus itself is beautiful. It's tiny, tiny, quaint, very, very nice. Everyone ties side two in there just because where Ithaca is, you've got the big super fast ferries that come past from Italy coming across towards Athens. They create quite a swell, so you can't actually drop your anchor in there because it quite often gets knocked out. 
So as you're coming into Frickers, you'd go side two on your port hand side as you're coming in. And it's very, very common there to raft boats up, sort of probably about in the summer, four to five deep quite, quite regularly. But everyone, again, it, it, it's sailing, so everyone's friendly. And uh, as long as you ask people, most people have no problem with that. You've got some nice tavernas in there. You've got some really beautiful walks on Ithaca. It's a very dramatic island. Um, definitely one of my favourites out here. And as you walk up the hills behind Ithaca, you can actually see over towards Kefalonia. Coming slightly south from Fricus, you have Keone. Now, Keone is one of the little jewels out here. It's very much known as what Fiscada used to be probably about 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Again, it's beautiful Bougainvillea, houses on the hillside, um, set in a nice deep V gully on Ithaca. And as you come in, it's just got a little bit of style and a little bit of class all of its own. And again, you drop stern two with your anchor and onto the main town quay there. Can get quite busy in the summer, so if you're coming in high season, I would suggest getting in. If you want to guarantee a spot on the quay, come in a bit earlier, maybe about two o'clock. But it is definitely one of those places that it is worth maybe losing a little bit or a couple of hours of sailing that day just to experience Keone. From Keone, as you go south down the island, there's some fantastic bays all down the southern side of Ithaca and around the northern end. But you've got the main town of Vathi. As you come into the harbour, it's probably one of the biggest natural harbours we have out here. And you've got an island in the centre, which has been used from anything from a prison to um, a quarantine hospital many, many years ago. And very friendly locals, but it's one of those harbours that's very, very large. You can either free swing, you can go stern to with your anchor. Um, you've got several different choices depending on what the wind's doing in there. You get a lot of super yachts in the summer as well, so if you fancy a bit of people spotting, it's normally quite a good place to go. But again, very good holding and very nice. And it's a proper town, so it's actually lived in, so you get a very good feeling for all sort of Greek lifestyle properly. Coming around from Ithaca, you have Kefalonia, probably one of our more famous islands. You've got three main harbours on the eastern side, um, which are Fiscado, Euphemia and Sami. Sami is very popular. It's actually a proper working harbour, so you do get all the hydrofoils that come in and out and the flying dolphins, but it's very popular because it's where the film set was, or the main film set for Captain Corelli's Mandolin, so everybody wants to go there. You've got Euphemia, which is in the centre. And again, just a very quaint, pretty little town. And on the northern end, northern tip of the island, the most, well, probably one of the most famous places out here, we call it our saint -Tropez. you have Fiscardo. It's got a very Italian influence to it from when the Italians were here during the war. You can see that in a lot of the architecture. Keep your eye out for Greek shipping. They'll give you five quick honks and then they will expect you to move. Again, Fiscardo, a little bit like Keone. It's very much worth going in early, getting yourself a nice spot, getting yourself well settled, and then just watch the carnage ensue because it's like wacky races sometimes. From Kefalonia, again, you've got so many fantastic bays between Fiscado and Euphemia, all worth going into. If the wind's in the right direction, which is our prevailing direction, which is a northwesterly, then absolutely perfect for overnights. You can just go in, drop the hook, you can be the only boat in there and just have a really kind of magical night on your own. Maybe have a little barbecue on the beach or something. The last two islands, or the main islands in the Ionian, you have Zakynthos, down to the south of Kefalonia. Zakynthos um, is famous for a couple of things. One of them being it's the kind of birthplace of loggerhead turtles around here. So right down on the south, you have a bay called Lagana. And at certain points of the year, whilst the turtles are breeding, they don't let boats in, um, they're very, very protective and we have a really good kind of wildlife um, and environmental club out here. You've got a Zakynthos town on the eastern side, which is a big working harbour, so if you're after pretty, pretty, probably not the perfect place to go, but if you're looking for provisioning or just a bit more to do, a bit more life, if you've got a younger crew with you, then great place to go and on the northern tip of the island you have Ias Nicholas which again just a big bay with a couple of town quays, a few tavernas and pretty much that's it. We go all the way up to the north from the south of the island we come to Corfu and again very well known island a lot of people have been on holiday here but 
there's some amazing places around Corfu that you can get to on a boat that you'd never even see on a normal holiday. One of the places that we tend to go is actually into Corfu Old Town, but it, it's literally just underneath. We moor in Mandraki Yacht Harbour. It's a sailing club and it's actually at the base of the old fort and you wouldn't even know you're in Corfu, it's so quiet. And then as you walk up through the grounds, there's a music school and then you are literally in old Corfu town, but absolutely fantastic. The Northern Ionian itself, you've also got the islands of Paxos and Antipaxos. Quite often people come out for two weeks and they might spend an entire week on Paxos. Paxos is stunning. You've got Gaios and Laka, the two main harbours. Lacquer's on the north, you literally go in, drop your anchor and free swing and quite, you'll find absolutely maybe 40, 50 boats and you'd never believe you'll get them all in there safely. It's got beautiful crystal blue waters, fantastic walks all around it, um, definitely one of, kind of our little gems out here again. Um, you've got Gaios, a little further south on the eastern um, part of the island. Gaius is the main sort of town on Paxos, but again, just absolutely beautiful. And on the southern tip of Paxos, you've got a beautiful bay of Monganissi. And Monganissi, again, just has one small taverna in it. Most people go in free swing just by dropping your anchor in the night. And then it's amazing. They do Greek dancing with fire. They literally light the floor and they Greek dance around that and they get you doing that as well. Last but not least, one of the the main sort of little gems around here, if you come across back to the mainland, whilst sort of opposite Paxos, you've got the town of Parga, and again, Parga's very famous out here. You've got an old Byzantine castle, fantastic sort of myth mythology and lots of um, old ruins and the city of Nicopolis, I think it's called. Um, well, well worth the visit though, and lots to do ashore as well as sort of sailing. Parga is a little bit different, out here we do a mooring on the beach so it's a, not for the faint-hearted sometimes but you literally come into the little harbour and you drive your boat onto the beach gently whilst dropping your kedge anchor off the back and then you walk your bow anchor out into the beach and then you literally pull back until your boat's floating again and you wouldn't believe it until you saw it you're literally on the other side of the, um, the bay to the main town quite a row round so I suggest getting Yanni the taxi driver comes out in his little kaiki with Zorba the Greek playing charges you two euros and he's hysterical and he'll drive you backwards and forwards all night if you like but again fantastic for swimming if you fancy doing something a little bit different fancy a bit of a day ashore then loads of things to do in that area and lots of kind of history so that's just a small taster of the Ionian we've got so much to do so much to see out here this base I haven't even been to and I've been here 12 years. We run five flotillas, three one weeks, two two weeks. Um, we have bare boating out here. We've got pretty much every different type of boat you could possibly want from a 32 foot to a 53 foot. We'll tailor it pretty much to what you need and what you'd like to do. So we look forward to seeing you here in the Ionian.